Hello everybody, I am Violin, and in this video I'm going to be teaching you guys some Kingdom Hearts 1FM speedrunning basics. Uh, whether or not you are new to speedrunning KH1, or you just want to improve at the game, regardless if you speedrun or not, these tips will help you improve at the game in various different ways. Uh, and if you are getting into speedrunning, I think it's really important to know these basics before you start learning like the route and the menus of each game. So I will go through various categories such as movement, combat, magic, menuing, the camera, and also EXP zero damage storage. First of all, let us talk about movement. Alrighty, so we're here in Traverse Town to talk about movement. The first thing to talk about in terms of movement is dodge roll. Dodge roll is our primary form of movement in the Kingdom Hearts speedrun. Any category you play will utilize, will utilize a lot of dodge roll, and in order to maximize dodge roll to the fullest potential, it is important to time the button presses instead of mashing it out. So, for instance, this is me mashing out my dodge roll. Like, it's, it's pretty inconsistent in terms of speed. Uh, but this is me timing the dodge roll. Now we're getting a pretty consistent rhythm and it's pretty fast. And you will not believe how much time al alone this, this can save. Just the ability to time dodge rolls can shave off minutes of time off of your PB if you perfect the timing, which honestly is not very difficult. You'll get it in no time. All right, another thing I'd like to talk about in terms of movement is using keyblade swings to get over ledges or to extend your jump. Like for instance, there's this ledge right here. Uh, normally it's kind of hard to get over this ledge. Like if you're on this left side right here, sometimes you can't get over this ledge even with a full jump. But with a swing, we can get over every time. Like see how I'm like barely over the ledge, but swinging brings me right over it. Which is really, really nice. And you can do that in various places in the speedrun. Which, um, once my speedrunning tutorials are out for the various categories, they'll be linked down below in the description and you can see exactly where we use these tactics. But swinging will extend your jump and uh, help you get over some really, really tough jumps. So like, for instance, there's the Hippo's Lagoon in Deep Jungle that a lot of people have trouble platforming over. Let's go over here, climb here. Like on this tree, like th this jump, see, I, I didn't make that. I, I couldn't make the jump, but if I do a Keyblade Swing, I go to her just fine. Uh, same thing for this one. You want to swing here and then here, jump a little late and then do a swing and boom. Like. It's really, really useful, and you can get around a lot more easily this way by just doing Keyblade Swings. And this also applies to like areas that are really high. You might not come across this very often, but like in the treehouse, hold on, let me, let me go there and show you guys. All right, so we're making our way up to the treehouse right here, and uh, I'll show you this really cool jump that you can do. Uh, normally there's a chest here where you have to utilize glide in order to get to the chest but from here and uh this can help you in like kingdom hearts one randomizer if you're um, wanting to try that out you can just keep doing keyblade swings to stall yourself in the air and then you can land on this boat it's really really cool and uh there there are various places in the game where extending your jump with a keyblade swing will definitely benefit you so that is a very important thing to keep in mind uh, if you're looking to speed on this game or um, just platform more easily. All right, for this next movement explanation, we're going back to Traverse Town so I can explain one more thing, one more thing. In the course of your entire speedrun, you're going to be doing a lot of like going back and forth between different areas, uh, especially in Traverse Town. We go from the th first district to the second district to the third district to the alleyway. Like, we do a lot of movement in this game. Uh, when we're not in combat. So it is very important uh, to maximize your speed of movement by taking as straight of a line as you possibly can and also hugging the wall whenever you can. So like, you know what I mean? Um, you can think of this kind of like 
um, I don't know, your favorite racing game, Mario Kart, Crash Team Racing, what have you. When you play a racing game, you like to hug the very inner part of the racetrack so you turn as quickly as possible, right? Same concept with this game. Uh, if you want to get from point A to point B as fast as possible, like from here to the second district door, you're going to want to hug this corner, skip that corner right there, and then walk straight to the door. If you want to go here, um, usually we go from, you know, we go from the alleyway to the third district. So you want to go straight towards that corner, the corner of the stairs right there, and then hug this wall, and then hug this wall. And we're going straight towards the door. Just minuscule uh, movements like that will save you minutes of time as well. Just making sure you're taking the straightest lines possible. Like, this is something not many people talk about, but I want you guys to know that like it, it it's actually super important and will save you so much time. Just just believe me. It's very, very important. All right, that concludes the movement section. Now let's talk about combat in this game. All right, so now we're going to talk about the combat. Uh, we are in deep jungle because this is a really good place to practice your combat. So the primary thing uh, that Kingdom Hearts speedrunners have to keep in mind is doing air combos is... I mean, it, I mean, it depends on the category you're running, but... Air combos are going to be your primary source of damage when it comes to physical combat, because air combos come out a lot quicker than ground combos, uh, with one exception, and that is if you have slap shot. If you have slap shot, doing ground combos is pretty fast. But if you're not running standard or proud any percent, you're probably not going to have slap shot. Uh, beginner any percent doesn't have slap shot, so you're going to be using air combos a lot. And I recommend coming here to Deep Jungle and practicing your air combos on this globe right here. Because it'll give you really good practice in doing like uh, underhand combos, which means like when your combo starts with an underhand swing. Um, you can also call them uh, short hop air combos. Basically, to do short hops, you just tap the X button to jump very... To do a very small jump and to uh, do a short hop attack i like to slide my thumb from the x button to the circle button so like that so this is what my hand looks like when i'm doing air combos and uh, just like dodge rolling, you want to time your inputs instead of mashing out your combo. Because if I try to do an air combo while mashing, this is what happens. It's very slow. It's very, very slow. But this is me timing, and it's a lot faster. If you want to do a short hop air combo, you cannot physically... Well, maybe sometimes you can mash it out, but it's, it's really hard. I would save yourself some trouble and learn how to time combos. That is like one of the most important things, if not the most important thing to learn in this game is ma uh, is uh, timing air combos and doing them as quickly as possible. And yeah, I've gone over where to practice on this globe, timing inputs, and uh, yeah, ground combos are pretty good if you have slap shot. But if you don't have slap shot, I would stay away from ground combos for the most part. Um, another cool thing in terms of combat is commanding your party members. So uh, KH1 is very unique in the way that you can manipulate your party members to do things that you want. So for instance, let's go to this room and uh, get some enemies. Uh, if I want to command Donald and Goofy to attack that specific power wild right there, I can lock onto him and mash triangle and they can be really aggressive towards that one enemy. And then if I want Donald and Goofy to come back to me, I need to unlock, make sure I'm not locked onto anything, and then press... Oh, I had R as a quick... Uh, make sure I don't have uh, a lock on, an auto lock on any of the enemies, and just press triangle. And they will come straight to me. You need to make sure they're not close to the enemies either. 
but uh, that'll be really, really useful in certain situations. For instance, there are parts in the speedrun where you don't necessarily want Donald and Goofy to attack things. There's the Oogie Boogie fight in Halloween Town uh, where you don't want Donald and Goofy to attack him. So what you want to do is unlock from Oogie and then command your party to go towards you so you can trap him on the platform. Uh, and then uh, there's also there's also other parts like the Behemoth fight in End of the World. I don't want Donald using gravity on the Behemoth, so I like to call Donald towards me instead of uh, locking on the at the start. But it's it's a very minor thing. This is just something that can help you in the long run if you ever run into an issue of your party not doing what they want this can be something that can help you and it can also make stuff like mp gift for example uh come out more frequently uh, as long as you have the mp requirement for goofy to give you mp uh, matching triangle does speed things up like that as well so that's pretty cool all right now we're also going to talk about magic let me go back to traverse town since there are no enemies there okay so i lied we're actually here in olympus coliseum because i Forgot my save file doesn't have thunder, so I have to get thunder real quick. But basically, there's only really one thing I want to talk about when it comes to magic. The thing I want to talk about is using magic on the ground versus using it in the air. And uh, basically, I'm just going to explain which magic you want to use in the air, which ones you want to use on the ground. So let's start with fire. Fire is a pretty cool spell. Uh, goes pretty far. Does a lot of damage. Fire, you want to use in the air. If you're using one or two fires at the most, if you're using more than two fires, so three or more, you wanna use it on the ground. And I like to mash it out in a rhythmic fashion. Mash it out, but also time it at the same time. So it comes out as quickly as possible, if that makes sense. That's what I like to do. Uh, I'm sure you can figure out a way to time it consistently. Yeah, like you, you, you could time it consistently, but it's pretty tricky. But uh, I, I just like to mash it out and time it at the same time, if that makes sense. Two fires, one or two fires using in the air is actually faster. Using more than two, you want to mash them out on the ground. Uh, we also have Blizzard, which is always faster in the air, no matter what. You only should use this in the air. Blizzard is only fast in the air. Uh, we also have Cure. Now, Cure is interesting because it actually comes out on the ground faster. But if you want to get away from danger, like if there's imminent danger on the ground, like an enemy on the ground, you want to jump away from them and then Cure for safety. However, there are moments you will want to dodge roll instead away from an enemy and heal on the ground real quick because it's a lot faster that way. Um, since you have to mash the care button twice in order to heal. So like, one, two. It takes a little bit longer to press two buttons instead of one, so doing it on the ground is just safer and faster in most cases, except if there's an, a grounded enemy that's going to hurt you, you'll want to jump in the air and then heal. Thunder is the same as Blizzard. It's faster to use in the air. Thunder is fastest in the air, no matter what. Same thing with gravity. You can get out gravities. You can get out gravities really quickly if you do it in the air. On the ground, this is how fast it is. Like it's really painfully slow. But in the air, it's like it's almost twice as fast. It's pretty crazy. And then arrow is the same as cure since it takes two presses. I see a lot of people using arrow in the air. Uh, I don't really think if I don't think using it on the ground or the air really matters as long as you're safe, because both take relatively the same speed to cast anyway. But yeah, that covers magic. Uh, aerial magic is really good. And fire you want to use on the ground if you're using more than two. All right, now that we're I mean, we, we can still stay here for the next part. Uh, menuing. So if you want to learn how to menu properly, I'll walk you through it. So basically, the first thing I want to talk about is soft shortcuts. Say, for example, you're running up to a spot and then you want to summon Dumbo for a skip, right? Or, or, or any summon. What you want to do before you get to that spot is make sure your cursor is hovering over Dumbo. So at the bottom here is Dumbo. My cursor is on Dumbo right now. And when I back out of it, 
and then I go back to the menu, it'll still be on Dumbo. So it'll be pre-selected. The same thing works with your items and your magic. So like, here, I'm on the second ether in my menu, and then I'm gonna go back to the items, and it's still on the second ether. Uh, here, I'm gonna go on gravity, right? And then I'm going back to the menu, and it's still on gravity. I like to call this soft shortcutting, because it shortcuts your stuff without actually putting them in the shortcut menu, and it'll stay this way forever. However, the shortcuts do reset. The shot, the soft shortcuts do reset when you leave a world and uh, re-enter a world or go to a different world. It resets back to the top option, so it'll be like that at the start of every world. Uh, however, your actual menu positions carry on from world to world. The game remembers your menu positions throughout the entire game. The only exception is if you go to the title screen and load a save, everything will default to the top. But during your speed run, your menu positions will carry on between worlds up until the end of your run. You'll want to memorize, when you're menuing stuff, you want to memorize inputs instead of just reading what's on screen. So for example, if I want to equip glide, uh, I would go down, assuming everything is on the default menu position. So everything is at the top, right? So if I'm starting from the top, for example, I know without looking, I know without looking that I just have to go down twice, go up once, hit circle, and then there's glide right there. Yeah, it's right there. So memorizing inputs and positions is gonna be vital in order to save time with menuing. It's really funny because I didn't really learn this until I switched to JP because I can't read Japanese. Uh, and because of that, I had to memorize all the inputs and in, in menu positions. If you're playing this on English, you can do the same thing. You can just memorize how many times you press a certain button and then you just memorize the inputs until they're in your muscle memory and you'll be able to do them really, really easily without even having to look at the game. Another thing about menus that not a lot of people know about is you can actually scroll faster if you hold L2 and then you hold up or down on the D-pad. You can actually scroll a lot faster. Or if you press L1 or R1, you can cycle through the menu. Pretty interesting. So that's something we like to use in the speedrun from time to time um, on, on certain occasions. Let's talk about the camera. The camera is my worst nightmare in this game, but there are ways to manipulate the camera. The first thing is the game remembers your camera position through room transitions. So for example, if I'm headed to this door, like straight on, if I'm facing straight at the door and I enter, I will be facing forward. The camera will be facing forward. If I enter this door with the camera facing Sora, like directly on Sora, the camera is on Sora when I am in the next room. So the camera memorizes, the, ca the camera position uh, is, is memorized throughout room transitions. And this is important to keep in mind for various reasons. Um, primarily just to move quickly throughout worlds. You'll want to know which uh, camera position is best, which I will explain in the actual speedrun tutorials. But for the basics, that's that's all you really need to know is uh, the camera position is memorized, is, is, is the game remembers the camera position past room transitions. Uh, there's also the ability to center your camera by pressing R3. You can turn the camera around in whichever way you're facing. However, on PC, they heavily nerfed the speed of R3, so it, it's very slow. If you're on console, it'll flip around almost instantaneously, and we, we use this on console a lot. But on PC, because they made it so slow, it's actually advised against using this and just turn your camera while moving instead. But there are certain rooms in the game Primarily rooms that are very small, where the camera actually turns around faster. Um, like, it, I think it turns around slightly faster in this room, because this room is smaller. 
It's really interesting, but we rarely use this trick on on a PC. But if you're speedrunning this game on console, it's definitely something to keep in mind. And this will definitely, definitely help you. And uh, the last thing I want to talk about is using manual camera instead of auto camera. Of course, runners will have their preference, but in my humble opinion, it is objectively better to use manual camera so you can control precisely where you're going. There are certain parts of the game where you'll have to skip certain platforms or or just move quickly throughout the world by by hugging the wall as I taught you guys earlier. And you can really only move in a straight line if you have manual camera on. It'll make things like Dumbo skip a lot easier for you and just hugging corners, hugging walls will be a lot easier if you use manual camera and you'll have full control of your camera with the right stick, which is really, really nice. And then if you want to move around while turning the camera, I like to hold my controller like this, where I tap the square button with my index finger and then I move the camera while moving around like so. I don't have to do this too much in a speedrun, but it is useful in certain spots. So that's something to keep in mind. It's not really that difficult once you get used to it. It's just a really basic claw group. And then, and then I just switch back whenever I have to do combos. I just switch back to, you know, normal controller holding style. <laughs> uh, that covers the camera. And the last thing I want to talk about in this video is EXP zero damage storage. And this will only apply if you're planning to play the game on proud mode or level one. Damage storage is basically a cool exploit with EXP zero. Basically EXP zero has two different properties aside from preventing you from gaining EXP. The first property of EXP zero is it actually prevents you from getting one shotted when you're at full HP. Keep in mind, you have to be at full HP for you to not get one shot with EXP zero. It doesn't give you second chance, like a lot of people say, but it does prevent you from getting one shot at one HP. And the other property of EXP zero is scaling your damage to be a bit higher. I, I believe they added this property so that level one isn't a complete pain in the butt, so you don't do super chip damage, but they actually forgot to turn off so ba basically how damage storage works is if you do a regular finisher either on the air or in the ground the game will memorize the damage multiplier of that finisher and apply it to every magic or summon attack you do after that and then once you do a regular attack again the damage multiplier resets and this is very useful for bosses like chernabog Ansem 1, Ansem 4, uh, any tanky bosses where you can summon, uh, like Kurtzisa even, you can do a full combo. And keep in mind, it has to be a regular finisher, so it cannot be Hurricane Blast, it cannot be Ripple Drive, Gravity Break, it, it can't be any of those. It has to be a regular ground finisher or air finisher. See, that was Hurricane Blast. You don't want you don't we don't want to do hurricane blast. So a regular finisher will activate EXP zero, and then you can use any magic or summon, and you'll get a really cool buff from it. There, are, there's also a misconception. Uh, some people have said that EXP zero isn't active unless your finisher connects with whatever you're trying to hit. This is actually not true. You can do a full combo with Combo Master and hit absolutely nothing. As long as your finisher comes out, you have EXP zero damage storage activated. And damage storage only works with enemies that have an entire HP bar or more. So like invisibles, I believe EXP zero works, works on those and um, every boss in the game will see a benefit from damage storage. I guess I'll explain like which magics, pretty much every single magic gets affected by damage storage. So fire, for example, will do more damage. Uh, Blizzard will do more damage. Thunder will do more damage. I don't think cure is affected by damage storage. So it won't heal you more or anything. Gravity, I believe, does a higher percentage of damage with damage storage activated. And then you have stop, which the duration of stop is longer. The enemy will be stopped for longer if you do a stop after a combo finisher, which is really, really useful 
for stuff like Maleficent in the level 1 speedrun or Captain Hook. And then Arrow will last you a longer period of time and uh, will deal more, more damage if you have Aurora or Aeroga, I believe. So that covers all the magic. And then Mushu, Simba, Dumbo, and Genie uh, are all affected by damage storage as well. However, Simba's damage buff with damage storage isn't that greatly affected, so it's really not worth utilizing that. Uh, Genie is really good against bosses like Dragon Maleficent, Behemoth 1 in uh, Hollow Bastion. Genie is really good with damage storage and deals a lot of damage. Um, you can also use it on Kurt Zisa. Uh, Mushu is by far the strongest. He does a lot of damage. I'm sure if you go watch a level 1 speedrun, you'll see exactly what I mean, or go watch my Proud any percent PB. I use Mushu in various spots like Chernabog, Ansem 1, and uh, you know, all that jazz. Uh, Dumbo is also affected. Dumbo also does more damage, but we don't really use Dumbo all that much anymore. I believe we used to use him on Captain Hook in level 1, but the current strat doesn't use Dumbo anymore, as far as I remember. In your casual playthrough, you might find damage storage Dumbo to be useful. And there's a really, really cool video on damage storage, specifically damage storage stop how the stop spell works exactly because there are some interesting quirks there's a really cool video by majoris 239 that uh, will be linked in the description down below if you want more information on how the stop spell works around damage storage uh, feel free to go check out that video as well thank you guys so so much for watching i hope you found this video to be very useful very informative i hope this video helped you guys in learning the kingdom hearts speedrun or just getting better at kh1 in general Throughout the next month or so, I'm going to be releasing some speedrunning tutorials on proud mode, standard, and beginner any percent. When those are finished, I will link those as well in the description down below, and they will be coming out within the next month or two. I hope you guys can look forward to those. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave it a like, and also subscribe if you are new for more Kingdom Hearts content. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye, everybody.